how are you able to have discernment when it comes to dealing with certain people? Because you, it's eat. I'm pretty sure you probably get a lot of people who try to get in contact with Joe through you. Absolutely. It's just staying in the genuine conversation. Um. Everything, everybody isn't meant to be close to what we're doing. Mm. So just because they reach out doesn't entitle them to get close. Mm. I use uh, my better judgment to determine what needs to get close and what doesn't. Mm. And I think Joe and I have a close enough relationship where he trusts my judgment and I trust his judgment. And... We allow each other to do our jobs so that we could stay focused and on the path we we plan to be on. I mean, yes, people try to get close. And there are some people that do because they deserve to be close and they have something they're bringing to the table that may not even benefit us, but that I feel like is important to be around Joe. Then I'll fast track that request to get to Joe. But if you're just coming around to cling on and waste our time then yeah i do everything in my power to keep you away i'm i'm just try, i'm trying to um understand something before you was his manager how long did y'all know each other um mm. so joe and i were meeting for about 3 to 4 months before um i started officially managing him and parks on the podcast he was the one who approached me and told me, hey, Joe's looking for a new manager. Because Parks and I have worked together for years already. I managed DJ Premier, too. Mm -hmm. And DJ Premier um, has had Parks as his engineer. engineer yeah. So while I was managing Premier, things were going well. And Parks is like, I know Joe's looking for a manager. I think you'd be great with him. Um, and we had a private conversation. And then he connected the dots for us to start meeting and, and seeing if we'd be interested in working together. So I would say there was a couple of months where we were back and forth. I was touring with Premier uh, and it, things weren't official between Joe and I. So we were just having conversations to see if we gelled, if our if our personalities would work together, because to me, it's not a job. It's very much my role is as a manager, as a, a partner is very much relationship driven like we have to be able to communicate mm -hmm. with whoever i work with some people think it's if you're a great manager you could work with a great artist that's not true um, if you're not able to communicate effectively with the people you work with you may as well not get started so i spent those first few months before we were officially working together to feel out what kind of person he was what his goals were um, what he was looking to achieve and to reverse engineer in my head, am I able to add value to this situation before I made any real commitment? But where were you at in your career at that moment before you decided to to move forward? Were okay. you would you say you were successful? Yeah, I was. I yeah, I was successful before Joe. Okay, so in that moment, being successful as a manager in your career, yeah. right? What made you take that leap? To because I feel like at that moment, yeah. Joe had a lot going on. Absolutely. What made you say, yeah, I want to do this with this guy? His honesty. Joe Joe has this ability to be vulnerable um, and not put up this facade. This facade of like, I'm greater than all. I'm this artist. I'm this, th this celebrity. Um, he was very transparent with me that he wanted change in his career. And that what he was doing wasn't working. Mm. And that made me feel like, oh, this is this is a good situation because he's not he's not entering the relationship acting like he knows it all. He's actually doing the opposite. Humble. He, he's humble. And he was like, what I'm doing isn't working for me. Mm. So I want someone who can come in and show me a different way so that I could achieve some of the things that I see a part of my future and and that was more attractive to me than anybody that has a built-in machine and just needs someone to come in and plug deals in place i was up for the challenge oh but you had to see something though right Oh, absolutely in the midst of so much 
chaoticness yep. and craziness that could be going around mm -hmm. an individual. Yeah. What did you see in him yep. again okay. <laughs> that make you say, of course, the, but besides being humble, yep. that, that's what make you like him, right? Yeah, absolutely. But were you able to see this yes, then? Yes, absolutely. I, well, I'll tell you this. Um, before I got started with Joe, I, I've always been a diehard Howard Stern fan. Mm -hmm. So I'm a broadcast junkie for that type of media. And something that always drew me to Joe was his stent on reality TV and just how open he was to the world about whatever was going on in his life. Mm. And I just remember him being such a lovable person and, and so polarizing. Like, he wasn't playing some game for the, the cameras. And I remember his WBLS stint. He was a radio host. Yeah. And everything he did between radio and reality TV was attractive to me. I wasn't even the biggest fan of his music, if I'm being honest. He knows this. I was a fan of his personality. Mm. I always thought his stardom was going to be biggest on TV and broadcast. And so that's what I saw in him. I always looked at him like... Um, an even stronger version of Howard Stern for hip hop and for music and for the culture that I was involved in. So it, it wasn't me meeting him that, that attracted me to working with him. It was me knowing what I liked about him, hit the qualities that I was attracted to him. And then that conversation and the conversations that came after that, that let me know that, okay, what I see can see him doing in a big way mixed with the attitude he has and the vulnerability and his ability to, to say, okay, I want to do things differently. All those things together was the perfect cocktail of ingredients that you need to find success. Mm. So that's what I saw in Joe.